The Mets take on the Phillies, 105 p.m. Eastern first pitch. The Phillies are the $1.50 favorite. Totals nine and a half, juice to the under. The Mets are plus a buck and a quarter on the money line. And if you like the Mets on the run line, they're minus 160, catching the one and a half. We got Rick Porcello for the Mets, Zach Wheeler for the Fightins. I've won three out of my last four Better Friends tier package plays on patreon.com slash Brock Page. I'm also hitting at 60% my last 10 board member tier package plays on that site as well. For more information on how you can get in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. Now the Mets dropped the first two games of this series to the Phillies. They gave up 12 total runs in those two losses. The Mets have also dropped four out of their last six, and that's going to include a 16-4 loss to the Nats during that span as well. The Mets are currently four games below 500, and they have a win percentage of just 409. They're four games back of the Marlins for first place in the NL East. They've also won just four of 10 away from home this year. Rick Porcello's on the mound today for New York. One and two on the year with a 568 ERA and a 1.63 whip. The Mets rank in the bottom 10 of runs allowed on average per game, bottom five in hits allowed. They're taking on a Philly squad who's won three out of their last six themselves, and that includes putting up a 13 spot on the Braves during that stretch. Zach Wheeler's on the mound for the Fightins here today. He's 2 0 with a 2.89 ERA. Wheeler's also averaging just 13.8 pitches per inning, which will allow him to go deeper and deeper into these games. The Phils are in the top 10 in scoring, top 10 in offensive walks. Bryce Harper is leading the team in hits and batting average. That's exactly what they paid him for. He's hitting 346 with four homers and a dozen RBI. Uh, He's also got an OPS of 1.150. Uh, JT Real Muto, he's currently leading the club in homers and RBI. He's hit eight bombs already, which is currently tied for fourth in the league. He's also knocked in 20 RBI, which is tied for third as well. The Phils are currently 9-2 in their last 11, hosting the Mets at Citizens Bank Park. Now, total-wise, seven out of Philly's last 11 ball games stayed under the total of nine and a half runs. Meanwhile, the Mets on the other side, they are currently 70% to the under away from home this year. Give me the fighting Phillies winning this one outright and the under nine and a half in that game. Before we go ahead and move on, just want to take another quick time out and welcome you to the video. Got some lines and personal leans out for Sunday's MLB baseball action. Happy Sunday to you guys. Hopefully you are having an outstanding weekend. Uh, I had a crazy Saturday night. I stayed up to uh, 11 o'clock watching the Dodgers Angels game. But uh, anyway, before we dive into some more free content here, I just have to quickly remind you once again that we are currently three and one in our last four better friends tier package plays on patreon.com slash Brock Page. We're also hitting at 60% in our last 10 board member tier package plays on that site as well. If you want some more information on how you can join in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. Moving on, the Indians take on the Tigers, 1.10 p.m. Eastern start time. The Indians are the $1.45 favorite, totals 9.5 flat. The Tigers are plus 120 to win it. And if you like Detroit catching the one and a half, they're minus 133 for some run line cash. We got Michael Fulmer for the Tigers, Adam Plutko for the Indians. The Indians have won their last two straight with both victories obviously coming against the Tigers in this series. They actually put up 13 total runs in those two contests. Cleveland's also won four out of their last six ball games as well including a 7-1 victory over the White Sox during that stretch. Uh, We're looking at a Cleveland squad who's just one game behind the Minnesota Twins for first place in the NL Central. Now, Adam Plutko will be uh, delivering the first pitch here for the Twins today. Uh, Definitely uh, viewed as one of the leaders on that squad. He's got a 2.45 ERA and a 1.00 whip in 11 innings of work. Cleveland's in the top three in offensive walks, top three in striking batters out. 
The Indians are giving up just 2.7 runs per contest on average for the season. Jose Ramirez currently leads the team in hits. He's currently batting 278 with four homers and 16 RBI. Fran Mill Reyes currently leads the club in batting average. He's hitting 292 with three homers and 13 ribbies. And Carlos Santana, he currently leads the club in OBS. He's been walked 27 times already on this season. Cleveland is a perfect 10-0 in their last 10 head-to-head meetings with the Tigers. And speaking of the Tigers, they lost their last four straight. They gave up 28 total runs during that stretch. The Tigers have won just 4 of 12 at home this season. And they have Michael Fulmer on the bump. He's got a 6.35 ERA and a 1.76 whip thus far on the year. The Tigers are just 3-9 and nine against the spread at Comerica Park. And of course, whenever I'm referring to the spread in baseball, I'm referring to the run line. Now, Detroit's also in the bottom five in striking out, bottom 10 in runs allowed. And when it comes to the total in this one, six out of the Tigers' last seven head-to-head meetings with Cleveland stayed under the posted total. And as a matter of fact, Detroit went 67% to the under in their last 15 contests against the American League. Meanwhile, the Indians on the other side, uh, they saw six out of their last seven ball games stay under the nine and a half themselves. The Indians are officially 9-2 and two to the under in all of their road games this season as well. So with all that said and done, give me the Cleveland Indians winning this one outright and the under 9.5 in that game. All right, next matchup I have for you, it is going to be the Mariners taking on the Astros. And that is going to be a 2.10 p.m. Eastern start time. Now, no real surprise here. The Astros are minus 250, totals 9.5, juiced 15 cents to the under. The Mariners are plus 205 for an upset win. And if you like Seattle to keep this one close, they're plus 105 catching the run and a half. We got Justice Sheffield for the Mariners, Lance McCullers for the Astros. Now the Astros have won four out of their last five, including both games one and two of this very series with Seattle. Now the Houston Astros gave up just seven total runs in those four victories that I just mentioned. Houston's just a half a game behind second place Texas in the AL West. Lance McCullers is also 2-1 on the season, 16 strikeouts in just over 20 innings of work. The Astros are currently, uh, well, they currently won seven out of their last 11 ball games at Minute Maid Park. They currently rank in the top 10 in home scoring. Uh, the Astros also rank in the top 10 in hits on average per game. Carlos Correa leads the team in hits, batting average, and on-base percentage. He's currently batting 310 with an OBP of 402. Yuli Gurriel currently leads the club in homers with five, while Martin Maldonado, uh, Martin Maldonado excuse me, leads the club in RBI with 14. The Strohs are 14-1 in their last 15 games hosting the Mariners at Minute Maid Park. And speaking of the Mariners, they are on a four-game losing streak, 24 total runs they gave up during that stretch. They also dropped 11 out of their last 14 ball games as well. The Mariners are in last place in the AL West. They actually have the second fewest wins in the American League right now. Seattle's won just 4 of 12 on the road this year and have Justice Sheffield on the bump, who currently has an ERA of 527 and a whip of 1.32. Now, the Mariners are scoring just 3.8 runs per contest, and they rank in the bottom three in runs allowed per game. Now, total-wise, the Mariners have gone 10 and 2 to the over when traveling this season. Justice Sheffield's last three starts all got over the posted number as well. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, the Houston side, seven out of their last 11 ball games at Minute Maid Park got over the posted total themselves. Give me the Astros minus one and a half in the over nine and a hook in that game. Next contest, Royals, Twins, 2.10 p.m. East. The Twins are minus 200, totals nine and a half. The Royals are plus 165 for an outright win. If you like KC to cover, they're minus a buck and a quarter on the run line. We got Brady Singer for the Royals, Randy Dobnak for the Twins. Now, Minnesota's won three out of their last five. And that's going to include a 4-2 victory where they doubled up the Royals uh, in the series opener. The Twins gave up just two runs per contest on average in their uh, last three victories. Minnesota's currently in first place in the AL Central. 
and has won 80% of their ball games at home. Randy Dobnak's 3-1 on the season, 0.90 ERA, and a 0.90 whip as well. The Twins are in the top 10 in run production, top 10 in hits allowed. These guys are giving up just 3.3 runs per contest on average for the season. Nelson Cruz is still leading the team in hits, batting average, homers, RBI, and OBP. This guy is uh, making history with regard to his production and his age. Uh, he's currently hitting 342 with six homers and 21 RBI. He's also got an on-base percentage of 412, and he is first in the majors in runs batted in. Jorge Polanco's also hitting 308 with eight ribbies. The Twins have cashed in on the run line in 70% of their games at home this season. Now, the Royals on the other side, they've dropped two out of their last four, including a 6-5 to five loss to the Cincinnati Reds. The Royals are currently in last place in the AL Central, and they've won just five out of 13 contests away from home. Brady Singer is on the hill for Kansas City this afternoon, 1-1 one one with a 4-5-0 ERA and a 1.30 whip. KC's in the bottom 10 in run production, bottom 10 in hits on the road. The Royals have won just four out of their last 19 games in Minnesota. Now, total-wise, four out of KC's last five ball games stayed under the total of nine and a half runs. The Royals are officially nine and four to the under when traveling this year. Meanwhile, uh, the Twins on the other side of things, well, they saw nine out of their last 10 home games stay under the posted number themselves. That's 90% to the under during that stretch. Give me the Twins minus one and a half and the under nine and a half in that game. Next contest, Brewers, Cubs, 2.20 p.m. Eastern start time. The Cubs are minus a buck and a quarter, totals nine and a half. And if you like Milwaukee in an upset, they're plus a buck ten to win it. Uh, certainly not an impossibility there, as Milwaukee's playing the Cubs pretty tough. But anyway, we got Josh Lindblom for the Brewers, Big John Lester for the Cubs. The Cubs have been victorious in nine out of their last dozen First place in the NL Central. They've also won 8 out of 11 at Wrigley. John Lester is 2-0 with a 106 ERA in 17 innings of work. He also posted an 0.65 whip thus far as well. The Chicago Cubs have cashed in on 64% of their run line plays at home this year. They rank in the top 10 in scoring, top 5 in hits allowed at home. They're allowing just 2.9 runs per contest at Wrigley this season. Ian Happ leads the team in hits, batting average, and OBS. He's currently hitting 309 and has an on-base percentage of 433. Anthony Rizzo leads the club in homers with five, and Jason Hayward's knocked in 11. The Cubbies are 3-0 straight up when Lester makes the start this year. They've also won 10 out of their last dozen when favored on the books. They're taking on a Brewers club who's won just four out of their last nine. And that's going to include a 12-2 double-digit blowout loss to the Twins during that stretch. Now, the uh, Brewers have won just nine of 19 ball games this season. And they find themselves four and a half games back of the Cubs for first place in the NL Central. Josh Lindblom's got an ERA of 568 along with a 1.58 whip. Milwaukee's in the bottom five in hits on average per game, and they average just 3.8 runs per contest. Now, total-wise, two out of Milwaukee's last three stayed under the total of nine and a half runs. The Brewers are also 15-4 and four to the under in their last 19 games at Wrigley. Chicago, on the other side, saw seven out of their last 11 home games stay under the posted numeral themselves. <laughs> numeral. I don't know why I said that, but anyway, give me the Cubs winning this one straight up in the under. Nine and a half in that game. Numeral. Uh, anyway, moving on. Rangers, Rockies, 3.10 p.m. East. The Rockies are 150. Totals 11 and a half. Rangers are plus a buck and a quarter. And if you like Texas on the run line, they're minus 150 to cover. We got Colby Allard for the Rangers. John Gray for Colorado. Now, the Rockies are currently on a three-game losing streak, including two losses to the Rangers during that stretch. Two home losses, might I add. Now, Colorado's dropped five out of their last six, including a 12-8 defeat to the Diamondbacks. And, you know, following a red-hot start to the season, the Rockies have dropped to second place in the NL West, two games behind the Dodgers for that top spot. John Gray is 0-2 on the season with a 6.41 ERA. He struck out just nine batters in nearly 20 innings of work, and he is currently posting a 137 whip. 
The Rockies are in the bottom 10 in hits, allowed bottom three in striking batters out. Now, Colorado's dropped four of seven when favored and covers the run line in just 41% of their games at Coors Field. They're taking on a Rangers club who's 7-1 straight up in their last eight. They gave up just uh, 2.7 runs per contest on average in those seven victories. The Rangers have battled their way back into second place in the AL West, and they are uh, giving the... Uh, did I say AL West? I think I meant AL Central. Uh, they battled back into second place in their division, and uh, they're giving the ball to Colby Allard this afternoon, who currently has a .78 whip along with nine strikeouts and nine innings of work. Colby's also posted an ERA of 1.00 even. The Rangers rank in the top 10 and runs allowed, top 10 and hits allowed. Nick Solak leads the club in hits, batting average in OBP. He's currently batting 312 with five doubles and eight knocked in. Joey Gallo's hit four home runs on the season as well, while, <coughs> while Sin Chu Chu, <laughs> Sin Su Chu is batted in 10, excuse me. The Rangers are 5-4 straight up when catching plus money, and they're perfect 6-0 straight up in their last six at Coors Field. Now, total-wise, three out of the Rangers' last four ball games stayed under the total of 11.5 runs. Nine out of their last 11 also stayed under that number. Meanwhile, the Rockies, on uh, their side of things, they've gone 7-5 to the under at home themselves, 13-7 and to the under for the entire season. Give me the underdog Rangers, plus 1.5 and the under 11 and a hook in that game. All right, next and final matchup for the show, it is going to be Dodgers Angels 4:10 p.m. East. The Dodgers are minus a buck 90, numbers 10 and a half flat. The Angels are plus a dollar 55 for some money line cash, and if you like the Angels for some run line cash, they're plus 105 catching the one and a half. Not a bad price point there. We got Julio Tehran for the Angels, Dustin May for the Dodgers. Now the Dodgers have won their last four straight and amassed 30 total runs during that span. They're currently in first place in the NL West, and they are tied with the Athletics for the most wins in the majors. The hard-throwing youngster, Dustin May, takes the mound for the Dodgers this afternoon. He has 17 strikeouts in just over 19 innings of work. He's also posted a 2.75 year ERA and a 1.17 whip. The Dodgers are 2-1 straight up when he starts. The Dodgers also rank in the top three in run production per contest, top three in hits allowed. They're giving up just 2.9 runs per contest. Now, Mookie Betts leads the team in hits, batting average, homers, and RBI. Mookie's hitting 309 with eight homers and 18 batted in. Justin Turner's also knocked in 16, along with six doubles. And Chris Taylor currently leads the club in on-base percentage. He's got an OBP of 392. He actually really looks like Joe Flacco, by the way. Uh, take a look at it today if you end up watching the game. But uh, anyway, the Dodgers have been victorious in six out of their last seven on the road. And when it comes to the scoring in this one, the Dodgers' last three straight got over the total of 10 and a half runs. Meanwhile, the Angels are officially 10 and one to the over at Angel Stadium. Give me the Dodgers minus one and a half in the over 10 and a hook in that game. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you decide to get a package here today, just keep in mind we'll bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy Sunday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash rock page.